Welcome back. Today, in this video, we are going to discuss about the muscles in the gluteal region. Of course, the muscles in the gluteal region are very important as far as our clinical and professional field is concerned. Because one of the muscle, the largest muscle in the human body is in this area. That is the gluteus maximus. And it has a great role in our erect stance. The other muscle, that is gluteus medius and minimus, is very important in maintaining our normal gait. They help in keeping our pelvic in a neutral pelvis in a neutral position. And of course, you have heard about other muscle known as the pyriformis, which often entraps the sciatic nerve and produce pyriformis syndrome. So this region is very important as far as it is concerned. So let us crack this region, the gluteal region, in detail but in most simplified manner. region when I tell about gluteal region we have a large number of muscles in that region not like front of the thigh or right canal four or five but here you have ten muscles which are the gluteus maximus gluteus medius gluteus minimus superior gemellus inferior gemellus obturator internus obturator externus quadratus femoris tensor fascia lata and pyriformis but don't worry Hearing these 10 names, don't think that how can I remember this, but this is very easy as simple as compared to or as simple as studying the adductor, can I, adductor region or front of the thigh. Why? Because just look at this. The first muscle is a gluteus. Okay. You have to remember the term gluteus. Okay. Once you remember the term gluteus, you have three muscles in this name three muscles in the same name that is the gluteus maximus gluteus medius and gluteus minimus see in this 10 we cover three muscles with one single name that is the gluteus remember gluteus you have gluteus maximus medius and minimus good right now you remember the term obturator Obturator. How can you remember the term obturator? It is because you know that in the pelvic region you have a foramen known as the obturator foramen. Remember that and you get two muscles with that. That is the obturator externus which is situated outside and obturator internus. See? Obturator internus. So you already covered five muscles, right? With just two names that is the gluteus and obturator. And now let us remember the term known as the gemin gemellus okay gemellus now remember uh, how can you remember the term gemellus it is how because you know that there is a circus company known as the jumbo circus similarly you have gemini circus this correlate with that or any other names which you find easy that is that superior gemellus and inferior gemellus superior and inferior gemellus so you get two in that uh, single nerve gemellus that already you studied now three plus two five plus two seven names how easy it is see you just have to remember three gluteus you remember gluteus medius minimus you get it you just uh, remember gemellus you get gemellus superior and inferior right you remember obturator you get two obturator internus and obturator externus and what are the other muscles which is the pyriformis which i already told you now most of us know this muscle in the body so that's not a big deal the next one is tfl that is tensor fascia lata this is also quite known to us this is a lateral muscle tensor fascia lata in hip flexors we studied this muscle that is tensor fascia lata now you have nine muscles and the last muscle is known as quadratus femoris you know that in the anterior compartment of the thigh you have rectus femoris in posterior compartment of thigh or in hamstring you have biceps femoris so there is femoris muscle three femoris muscle in front of uh, in together in around your femur that is the biceps femoris rectus femoris and back you have quadratus femoris so that is how easily you can remember these names 
Clear? Now let us discuss each and every one of this muscle in detail. This is also going to be an easy task, not uh, nothing to worry about this. This is also going to be a very easy task. So the first muscle in this region is about gluteus maximus. As I told you what you have to remember about this muscle, it is the largest muscle in the human body, the gluteus maximus. Once it is a large muscle, it will have a great deal of origin. Okay, it will be arising from a great area, not a single area. Right, let us draw it. Okay. Now, um, if this is a, a person standing, okay, good. This is a lateral view, actually. Here you have the spine, okay, you have the spine. Just, just schematically, you have to draw it. And you have this one, okay. And let it be like this, okay. And this, this let it this be your sacrum, okay. And here you have the coccyx. Okay? And from here, you have the pelvis arising like this, okay, pelvis, okay. Pelvic bone, it is arising, it comes like this, it moves like this, and it finally, something like this, okay, just, just for your uh, remembrance sake, okay, you have a curator foramen here, and whatever it is, okay, and now, you have a ligament that spans actually this area, okay, that is known as the sacrotuberous ligament, one ligament known as sacrotuberous ligament, okay, now, let us see the origin of this gluteus maximus muscle. I told you it is a large muscle, so it will have a large origin. So it arises from some part of the sacrum. Very good. It arises from the coccyx. So you got it one. One is the sacrum. Second one is your coccyx. Okay. Now, here you have this ligament. Sacrotuberous ligament. Sacrotuberous ligament. So it arises from three areas. You got it already. Now what is this area? This is a ilium okay this is a pelvic bone pelvic bone is having actually a posterior gluteal line uh, three gluteal lines are actually seen and anterior gluteal line and a very small inferior gluteal lines you have three gluteal lines like this this is like this gluteal lines okay now the first gluteal line is your posterior gluteal line okay we now this muscle arises from this area too that is from the posterior gluteal line it arises from the posterior gluteal line Area between posterior gluteal line and the ilium. Area between posterior gluteal line and ilium. Posterior gluteal line. Area between ilium and posterior gluteal line. Posterior gluteal line. So this is the origin of this large muscle. In fact, it is very simple. It arises from almost all the structures seen in that pelvic region. That is from the sacrum, that is from the coccyx, that is from the sacrotuberous ligament, that is from the ilium. Ilium, how you have to remember, there are three gluteal lines and from the posterior one. From the posterior gluteal line it arises, then the area between posterior gluteal line and the ilium, structure ilium, there it arises. And the iliac crest also. So this is how this muscle arises, this large muscle known as gluteus maximus. In fact, it is a very large muscle so that you cannot see any other muscles when there is gluteus maximus. You have gluteus medius, you have gluteus minimus and all obturated internus, externus, everything embedded inside this muscle. And when you remember this glute, uh, remove this gluteus maximus only, you can see the other muscles. Now let us move on to the other muscles in this region. Okay. Next one it is gluteus minimus, medius. I told you about three gluteal lines. This is the first one, posterior gluteal line. You have anterior gluteal line and you have inferior gluteal line. In posterior, you already got one muscle. So you don't have to remember about that. Now you have to remember about the gluteus medius. What is this gluteal line? This is the anterior gluteal line. Area between anterior gluteal line and posterior gluteal line. Area between anterior gluteal, let us draw with the red itself. Area between anterior gluteal line and inferior posterior gluteal line. So posterior is already taken. Now you have only anterior. So the area between anterior and posterior gluteal line. Very good. That's simple to remember. You just have to remember the gluteal lines. Now you have the gluteus minimus. Gluteus minimus. Now you, here you have the anti inferior gluteal line. So this will be arising from area between inferior and anterior gluteal line. Very simple. Area between inferior and anterior gluteal line. Exactly speaking, outer surface of the ilium. Okay. 
now let us uh, draw with uh, i understand with this help of this one that is the iliac this is the iliac fossa this is outer surface of the ilium outer surface of the ilium you have the gluteal line so this is from the outer surface of the ilium so and um, gluteus maximus is from posterior gluteal line on the outer surface of ilium and area between behind the posterior gluteal line this one is from gluteus medius is from anterior gluteal line and posterior this one is from inferior gluteal line and anterior gluteal line that's how you have to remember the origin of three muscles see we studied three muscles in one of the most simplified manner just by remembering the gluteal lines now let us remember let us study about the other muscles which is the obturator obturator okay you have two obturators that is the externus and internus externus and internus you have two uh, muscles the glue externus and internus you know that there is a foramen known as the obturator foramen there is a foramen known as the obturator foramen externus will be arising from the external means external outer surface of outer surface of obturator foramen very good outer surface of obturator foramen good and obturator membrane and outer surface of obturator membrane obturator membrane is a membrane that covers the obturator foramen see that is the obturator external so remember external it will be arising from the outer surface now you have to remember the internus anybody can guess it it is from the inner surface of inner surface or we can call it as pelvic surface inner or pelvic surface of obturator membrane obturator foramen inner surface of or pelvic surface of obturator foramen or obturator membrane and obturator fascia obturator fascia obturator fascia and then giving leaving one more line this is very important because only this you have to remember that this obturator internus has also origin from ischium ischial tuberosity ischio pubic rami pubic rami and some part even from the ilium so this is a bit tough here all other things are easy to remember but let us take the risk it is from the ischium, ischial tuberosity and ischial pubic rami. Even though you don't remember that, just remember from the inner surface of the obturator membrane and obturator fascia. And also from ischium, ischial tuberosity and ischial pubic rams. Right? Mm -hmm. That is the obturator muscles. Now you have the two groups of muscles, which is a geminus. Okay? Superior and inferior gemini. Okay? Superior and inferior geminus. Okay? Geminus superior inferior all right you know that there is two sciatic nodes one is the greater sciatic nodes this one and lesser sciatic nodes here this muscle is actually arising from the lesser sciatic nodes superior will be arising from superior okay upper part of upper part of great lesser sciatic nodes lesser sciatic nodes okay inferior will be arising from <laughs> lower part very simple lower part of lower part of lesser sciatic nodes very good right this is all simple just remember the lesser sciatic nodes from the superior part and upper part and lower part that's it all about the in gemellus muscles so already we covered how many muscles 3 plus 2 plus 2 that is a uh, 7 muscles now we are going to deal with the other muscles which are that quadratus femoris now we are going to remember about the quadratus femoris. Here you have to remember this muscle is arising from the ischial tuberosity. Outer surface of ischial tuberosity. This you have to remember. There is no easy going this. You have to remember that is from the ischial tuberosity. Now you have the tensor fascia lata. Tensor fascia lata. Okay, you have the ilium, right? You have the ilium, then you know there is an outer lip and inner lip for the iliac crust. This is arising from the outer lip of the iliac crust. Outer lip of iliac crust. Iliac crust. Outer lip of iliac crust. That's simple. 
this tensor facial lata is indeed arising from the outer lip of the iliac crest. Clear? Yes. And the last muscle which you have to remember is the pyriformis. Pyriformis. Good. Pyriformis. Right. This is arising from inner surface of sacrum. Inner surface of sacrum. Okay. And greater sciatic nodes. Greater sciatic nodes. We already studied about the lesser sciatic nodes. So you can correlate with that. This is the lesser sciatic nodes. Here it is a greater sciatic nodes. And in gluteal region, there is the sacrum. So this is from the sacrum. Right? So this three you might have to study it again and again. Other three, seven muscles you can go for an easy manner. Just by remembering the other muscles. This three let us remember again. Quadratus femoris is from the ischial tuberosity. Tensor fascia anata is outer lip of the iliac crest. The pyriformis is from the inner surface of the sacrum and greater sciatic nodes. That's all about the origin of this gluteal region muscles. Now you have to see about the insertion, right? You have to go for the insertion. Good. Insertion. In insertion in the gluteal region, you always remember that is in the femur. Okay. Femur and greater trochanter in specific. Greater trochanter of the femur in specific. Let us see each muscle. Good. Let us see each muscle. Gluteus maximus. First muscle. This muscle is inserted into, there is a tuberosity in the femur, known as the gluteal tuberosity. So this is simple, it is inserted into the gluteal tuberosity, it is inserted into the gluteal tuberosity. It is inserted into the gluteal tuberosity, very simple. But exactly one by fourth part is only inserted into the gluteal tuberosity. Where does the other 3 by 4 part get inserted? Where does it insert? It is inserted into the IT band. 3 by 4 part is inserted into the IT band. IT iliotibial band. Okay. IT band. In fact, in the IT band, you have tensor facial atta muscle insertion. So, the tensor facial atta muscle, TFL, which is originating from the outer lip of the iliac crest is also inserted into the IT band. So two muscles are inserted into the IT band. So this is not also not a tough task because you can remember this one. So the gluteus maximus is inserted into the gluteal tuberosity, three by fourth part in the IT band and TFL. TFL is also inserted into the IT band. So we study two muscles, right? Tensor facial ladder is also inserted in the IT band. Now let us move on to the gluteus minimus and medius. Gluteus medius and minimus. Gluteus medius and minimus. For that, you have to remember this both muscles are inserted into GT. That is the greater trochanter. This both muscles are inserted into the greater trochanter. Medius is inserted in the lateral surface of the greater trochanter, and this is inserted into the anterior surface of greater trochanter. Anterior surface. Very simple, right? Very simple. I told you GT is important. Greater trochanter is important. So gluteus medius is inserted into the greater, greater trochanter. Gluteus minimus is also inserted into the greater trochanter. Not just these muscles. There are a lot of muscles which we are going to discuss later. Is also inserted into the greater trochanter. So this insertion is very simple uh, when we deal with the gluteal region muscles. Now let us move on to the other muscles. Now let us move on to the other muscles which is actually superior geminus okay geminus superior uh, inferior geminus right and obturator muscles in that obturator internus why i took obturator internus because this muscles superior geminus and inferior geminus blends with the tendon of the obturator internus Actually, these three muscles are coming as a common, as uh, inserted into the common region by blending into the tendon of this obturator internus. These two muscles will blend, let us show it like this, so it will be more easy. It will blend into the tendon of this, this will blend into the tendon of the obturator internus muscle. And where is it is inserted? Greater trochanter itself. Medial surface of greater trochanter. 
medial surface of you just have to remember the surface it is inserted into the greater trochanter that is a medial surface of the greater trochanter here you have the greater trochanter right and here inside it you have this insertion of superior inferior gemellus and obturator inter three muscles are inserted over there right three muscles are inserted over there now obturator internus you already studied now you have to study the obturator externus that is also inserted into the greater trochanter but in the trochanteric fossa trochanteric fossa of greater trochanter trochanteric fossa on the medial surface of greater trochanter so that is also inserted in the greater trochanter in fact all the muscles are inserted into the greater trochanter that makes the studying easy that is obturator externus is also inserted into the trochanteric fossa on the greater trochanter right so you covered a lot of muscles here actually eh? now you have to remember and let us cover the other muscles that is a pyriformis pyriformis you have the pyriformis and you have the quadratus femoris quadratus femoris in fact all of the muscles we covered just two of these muscles i told you which is the important structure in greater uh, lower limb on this one gluteal region that is greater trochanter uh, pyriformis muscle is inserted into the lip outer lip of greater trochanter outer lip of greater trochanter or you can call apex of the greater trochanter more clearly apex of the greater trochanter apex of the not trochanter greater trochanter right and of quadratus femoris the name quadratus gives you the hint in the quadrate tubercle of the greater trochanter quadrate tubercle all right quadrate tubercle outer lip of iliac um, greater trochanter means here in this point this will be inserted that is inserted in the outer lip of the greater trochanter and quadrate tubercle on the greater trochanter which one quadratus femoris muscle so how many muscles in fact all the muscles except tensor fascia lata and gluteus maximus eight muscles are inserted into the greater trochanter which are that superior inferior gemellus and obturator internus common tendon it is becoming common tendon and inserted right then you have the fourth muscle pyriformis it's inserted quadratus femoris it's in the inserted then you have which are the muscles tfl we already studied uh, gluteus maximus we already studied obturator internus externus obturator externus is also inserted into that muscles right then gluteus maximus and minimus which makes this amoid muscles eight muscles in fact all the muscles except gluteus maximus and tensor fascia lata and you don't have to remember in my heart tensor fascia lata and gluteus maximus because that is also inserted into the common place which is known as the it band that makes the study very easy now we are going for the nerve supply of this region in fact uh, since this all are easy nerve supply is a bit confusing because you don't have a common nerve you have some few nerves which you have to study the gluteus maximus is supplied by inferior gluteal nerve inferior gluteal nerve gluteus maximus is supplied by inferior gluteal nerve root value l5 s1 s2 okay good gluteus minimus and medius two other muscles he is supplied by superior gluteal nerve superior gluteal nerve so inferior gluteal nerve l5 this would be l4 l5 s1 right and tfl tensor fascia lata is also supplied by superior gluteal nerve right now obturator externus obturator externus is supplied by posterior division of posterior division of obturator nerve obturator nerve posterior division of obturator nerve the nerve that supplies the adductor canal compartment right that is from uh, l2 l3 l4 root value l2 l3 l4 that is a obturator externus muscle right obturator externus muscle uh, where can i write um, now you have the other muscles known as the obturator internus obturator internus it is supplied by the nerve to obturator internus nerve to obturator internus nerve to obturator internus the root value n5 s1 s2 okay same root value of inferior gluteal nerve nerve to obturator internus supplies obturator internus muscle very good right 
then you want to let's keep it the pyriformis muscle pyriformis is supplied by ventral rami of s1 s2 ventral rami of s1 s2 pyriformis muscle is supplied by ventral rami of s1 s2 and now we have the other muscle known as the quadratus femoris quadratus femoris it is supplied by nerve to quadratus femoris nerve to quadratus femoris nerve to quadratus femoris right its root value is l4 l5 s1 okay and the root value of superior gluteal nerve now you have two more muscles generally okay superior and inferior gemellus where we will keep let us keep superior gemellus here that is superior gemellus is supplied by nerve to pterator internus and inferior gemellus is supplied by nerve to quadratus femoris that makes the study a bit easy right superior gemellus okay you remember si si obturator internus plus superior gemellus not inferior gemellus not sia inferior uh, internus plus uh, inferior gemellus uh, if it is becoming ii this is actually si okay obturator internus with uh, superior gemellus supplied by nerve to obturator internus and obturator um, um, quadratus femoris plus obturator sorry inferior gemellus supplied by nerve to quadratus femoris so the nerve supply is inferior gluteal nerve, superior gluteal nerve, nerve to quadratus femoris, nerve to obturator externus, um, nerve to uh, obturator nerve, and the S1, S2 ventral rami. Just remember that. And finally, we move on to the last aspect that is the action of these muscles, right? Action. Very important, very, very important. You have to remember gluteus maximus. Never forget it is the chief extensor it is a chief extensor of the thigh region of the hip extensor of the hip it is helping in the maintaining posture it is an extensor and lateral rotator it is a chief extensor as well as lateral rotator of the hip chief extensor and lateral rotator of the hip now now you have the gluteus medius and minimus okay these are chief abductors. These are chief abductors. Also maintains the pelvis height, uh, pelvic position or position. Also prevent pelvic drop. Okay, this is a chief abductor muscles. Which one? Gluteus minimus and maximus. This prevents pelvic or uh, keeps the pelvic in neutral position. No need to write pelvic height. Uh, pelvis in neutral position. Pelvis in neutral position. Okay, keep the pelvis in neutral position. So if this gluteus medius and max, maximus is weak, you have the Trentinenberg gait, which we'll discuss later. Now, gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, good, right? Then, you have which muscles? Which one is pyriformis? Pyriformis muscle um, is actually the lateral rotator, chief lateral rotator, lateral rotator pyriformis muscle is a lateral rotator okay now you have the tensor fascia latum which is actually um, abductor medial rotator and as well as uh, flexor of the hip flexor of hip and extensor of the knee joint flexor of the hip means secondary flex hip flexor only okay abduction is the main role abduction and medial rotation this gluteus maximum, medius and minimus also helps in medial rotation. The other muscles, obturator internus, externus, quadratus femoris, superior and inferior medius, helps the pyriformis muscle to become the lateral rotator. It also functions as the lateral rotator. So function is say easy actually. Gluteus maximus and maximus is chief extensor and lateral rotator. Okay, gluteus medius and minimus are abductor muscles and they help in maintaining the pelvic position. And then you have the pyriformis muscle as well as the all other muscles, obturator, internus, externus, quadratus, femoris, and superior and inferior gemellus, all functioning as the lateral rotator. Tensor fascia, you will have the function as abductor, medial rotator, flexor at the hip, and it is a two joint muscle because IT band is inserted in the tibia, therefore it acts as the extensor of the knee joint. Now about the clinical aspects, if gluteus maximus is weak, you have a gait known as the lurching gait or Maharaja's gait, patient will be walking like this, 
That is because when the gluteus maximus is void, you cannot have the hip extension and you will be hanging on his ligaments in the hip region. So he will be walking like this. That is known as a lurching gait or Maharaja's gait. Okay. Or pregnant ladies. Okay. And then you have the gluteus medius gait weakness. When the gluteus medius is actually weak, you have the Trentalemberg gait. Okay. That means a chorus girl's gait. So the person will be walking with one pelvic dropping. Pelvis drop at each side. Pelvis will be dropping on each side. So when he is walking, he cannot walk straight. Okay. When he is walking, the pelvic drop this side, this side, this side, this side. Similarly. Okay. And you have one clinical condition related to the pyriformis muscle, which is the pyriformis syndrome, which is actually entrapment of the pyriformis muscle. Sorry, the sciatic nerve in between the pyriformis muscle because sciatic nerve passing beneath the pyriformis muscle. So that's all about the important aspects in the gluteal region. Ten muscles, origin is uh, this one and many of the muscles you can relate and study. Insertion is mostly in the greater trochanter except two muscles and nerve supply you have to study. The function is extension, lateral rotation, medial rotation and flexion also of the other hip. Clear? That's all about the gluteal region.